Making life worth living in retirement with having is really about who we put in our lives and how they help us to move forward. It may sound a little selfish, but it's really not. Every single human being, regardless of their situation, their birthplace, their statues of limitations on issues they're dealing with in their birth family or otherwise, are really trying to figure out how to produce a life worth living and a retirement worth having. I mean, let's face it, the minute we hit adulthood and running, we are supposed to get a job. We are literally supposed to have money in our pockets to spend, to earn in different ways, and openly we've got to figure out how to produce retirement income as well. Most people don't go through any type of training program in school about how to build finances. Only some of the most savvy kids go into some sort of financial planning lessons in high school. And for the most part, we sort of suffer through the management of our budgets and producing a revenue for our family, especially if we move into that filmy realm too quickly in life. Sometimes we pick the wrong person, we stay with them for 7 or 10 years, sometimes 20, and then we realize they're not the right person for us. And it may seriously be that the reason they're not literally right for us is because they infiltrated our love network, but they didn't practically learn how to socialize appropriately with our family, our friends, our neighbors, and our other aspects of our professional life. That is sometimes the truth. There's a lot of women out there who talk about how they thought they found a really good one that they could improve. And I thought, wow, that really means that you think that your job in life is to improve a person's life instead of having an equal partner in life. There's a real difference in that. I've known several people in my lifetime who simply fell into new relationships after old relationships fell away. They didn't really think through what they really wanted in life. They didn't really look at whether or not God was leading them truly to that individual, or did they just pick up on the individual because they like different aspect of that person. Very few people actually give a list to the Father in Heaven or the Mother in Heaven about what they're looking for in a life partner. Most people also don't say, Lord, is this the person you've put in my life? And how do I know if he or she is the right one? They don't plan those simple little signs that you say to God only in your private moments of prayer when you say, I really like this individual that's coming into my life to say these type of words or to wear these type of clothes or to openly have some sort of signal that I know that literally this is the man or this is the woman that I'm supposed to spend time with, real quality time with, producing a long-term relationship and possibly marriage or some sort of spousal agreement. Because in life and partnering in life, we have all different ways we do this today. We have cohabitation, we have practically living together, we also have sleeping together, and we also have marriage, divorce, and other things. But openly, it's usually a singular force. We are choosing one person to spend our life with, and practically, that's what we're doing. Now, when we talk about these things, we're talking about them in real time. We're talking about the fact that we meet single people every single day of our life. We also meet married people that we should leave alone, and frankly, that is what happens. But there are moments in time when the Lord says, Look, you're about to go through a loss. I'm telling this person you're going to lose that person. And openly, it becomes prophetic justice in a way and poetic uh, in another way in that the person told that you're about to go through a divorce is also the person that is literally supposed to help you through that time period of loss and move as quickly as you possibly can into the loving relationship that God in heaven has put in front of you. Now, there's plenty of men out there who will take a good-looking woman and take her right out of the problem of being in divorce situation. They will pursue her, they will woo her, they will do all sorts of stuff monetarily, but they may not actually be right with the Lord in their presence about whether or not they're right for her long term. It's really easy to get into how someone looks, but the truth is we have no way to know what sort of illness, what sort of practical problems, what sort of challenges that God is going to give to someone or the mayhem that men, women, and children often play on other people's lives because they're too selfish to realize that their life is not their own. And when I talk about this in a way of a priest, I'm literally saying, look, there are lessons in the Bible scriptures that tell us that we should put our worries, put our lessons, put our promises of what we're looking for the Lord to do for our lives into God's hands. And then we start to see the signals, the signs, and other things in terms of language, in terms of color for play, in terms of all sorts of aspects of whether or not this person is right for us that come to pass. Now, chemistry aside, there's other aspects of life that we all have to be able to handle. We have to have practically someone we can talk to easily. 
We have to have practically have someone that we can move in their souls so much that they light up every time we see them and they see us, and it's a lifetime light. It's not just a moment light. It's not just a few years light. It's not a seven-year itch light. It's literally, practically, the entire lifetime of that relationship that that individual will light up for the rest of their life because you literally are in their life. Now that's what I mean. Now I know that my father loved my mother. I know because even his last days of when he was sort of in infantile status with his little issues and health, the only person he wanted to see every single day was my mother. Now, to my own mother's consternation, she is a lovely woman, and practically that's not the point. The point is they had literally been married so many years that they were sort of accustomed to each other, and openly that's how it goes. In my lifetime, I've cared for only a handful of women, and in truth, less than a handful. I had one lover in college, and that was maybe four years long. I practically moved on to another part of the world and found someone for more than 10 years. And the truth of how long that relationship went on is no one's business except the closest relations in my life or my students who understood the full story. Now, that's because they were part of my inner circle. You know, that circle of trust that we laugh about from that movie with Ben Stiller and other people in it, like Robert De Niro, but the reality is that the circle of trust is one of those things that people have to move themselves into and slowly move themselves out of, and sometimes they literally come back into those circles when the timing is right, when all the issues are finally taken care of, when all the problems are gone, but isn't that what marriage is all about? It's really about, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poor, and all the things of the old ways that we talk about, in terms of building a partnership, a strategic alliance, if you will, for life. You see, that alliance is supposed to do a lot of things. It's supposed to build us up. It's supposed to produce us for us for loving relationships on a daily basis. It's supposed to produce for us peace in our soul, a true love of someone or being loved by someone so well that we realize that God is moving their love through them in a way that produces in us a spiritual awakening a new way of looking at life, a different perspective than we've experienced before with other love interests, and openly, sometimes a totally different venue of opportunity for our life because how their life aligns with ours makes music, literally makes magic instead of mayhem. There's a lot of relationship out there, mine included, that after a long period of time, the mayhem just became more than the magic. And that sort of happens to people when they don't choose for all the prophetic reasons they should, meaning they don't literally ask God, is this person right for me? Is this person that I'm supposed to even date? Is this person the right person to even produce before my children, if I've had some from other relationships? And is this person safe for me 100% that they will never harm me, they will never say anything other than the truth to me, and they will never dilly-dally or stray from my love? And that's something that a lot of people don't think about. They think, oh, he's good looking, but they don't realize that if he's good looking to you, he's probably good looking to a lot of other people. And I don't mean you should go find a dog of any kind. I'm just saying the reality of the truth, that manners aside, professional people who clean themselves up, who do really well in life, are pursued by a lot of people. And that's the truth for a lot of reasons. And sometimes those come into liaisons. And you want to know that the person you're with is never out there drinking wine and socializing and flirting with other men or doing anything to harm another individual in life. You also want to know that person has a philanthropic heart, that if someone was homeless or if someone was in need, that that person would say, absolutely, let's help them. Let's figure out what we can do to care for our family, our extended social relationships, our professional colleagues who need help when it's time. We won't let them go into the gutters. We'll simply say, let's do what we can in our part to connect them to the next person who might be able to help them to move them forward. Too many people just throw up their hands and literally say, I don't know how the hell that person ended up like that, but I am not touching that little problem. Well, maybe God is calling you to do something else other than that selfish attitude you're portraying. But the truth is, if you don't have the right loving partner in your life, you might take the wrong attitude. It's also true if you have the wrong literal pastor in life. That if you're attending a church where the pastor is only talking about how great he is and how sinful everybody else is, that's a real problem. If, on the other hand, he's grown because he's swiped some new information and started talking about real relationships, that's great. But openly, he is sort of the mentor for how people interact with others. 
I've been to plenty of churches where the parishioners totally fail to welcome a stranger into their fold. They treat him like he's a beggar. They treat him like he's not welcome. They take things from his bag. They call police. They just literally crap all over the opportunity to show Jesus in their life. And it's so amazing that I've almost made a study about the whole thing. That I can walk in in a matter of seconds, tell exactly what's going on in church, much like I can in businesses when I go in as a secret shopper. Sometimes paid, other times not, but openly the truth is we're all secret shoppers in life. Making that life worth living and retirement worth having is also about having the right lifetime partner in our life who will not only raise us up in our souls, but they will also challenge us to become all that the Lord in heaven and hosts of the spirit world has encouraged us to become in this particular lifetime. It's one thing to have a handsome gal or guy on our arm to go places and do things and have money to express ourselves in different ways, but it's also important to make sure that that person's soul is aligned with a heavenly idea. That practically when they have a philosophy in life of how to care for others, of when they have a love of the Lord or when they have a love of the Spirit, or when they literally have some sort of prophetic gifts that help us to move our lives forward in different ways that we recognize that individual. We also have to realize that sometimes it's not about the physicality at first, that a lot of times it's an intellectual affair, and then it's an emotional affair, and then it's a psychological affair, and eventually it becomes a physical affair. You see, that's what lifetime partners are. You see, at some point in life, the bodies don't work quite as well. We have to give some people some grace about how they live and what they do. When my father started to ail, my mother was literally upset, completely grieving her loss of having a strapping, strong, literally Air Force man as her parishioner or her patronage in the way that old of old ways when men literally did all the management of all the funds and all the finances and took care of practically everything, planning the entire life all the way through to retirement. That was the old way. Today, men and women are more equal in relationships, and they openly have a lot more opportunities to do the right thing, to become more to each other, to help one another, to literally build an empire. And that's what we're seeing a lot of on television now, even though some of it is rock star quality and a lot of brashness and physicality and abuse and all sorts of things. But the truth is that we're really looking at how to handle our lives so far. When we do this, we are literally looking at what is the most important thing for a person to do in life. And the most important thing for a person to do in life is literally to meet new people, to say, hey, what you're doing there, or wait their turn to literally meet them so someone else. I'm always networking when I'm out and about, no matter what I'm wearing, no matter what I look like, no matter how hairy and furry my beard is, it doesn't practically matter. I don't always have business cards on me, that is true, because someone keeps pilfering them from me, and openly it gets tiring. But in truth, I always try to produce an idea in the professionals that I meet that they should carry them at all times because you never know who you're going to meet. You never know what it's going to be like. And the people who really want your information will ask for it. It's okay for you to pass your card to someone because you're interested in them, but it's also more important that they want to be have the same liaison with you by asking you for your information. People today sort of miss out on opportunities that God's put on their path because they literally don't think, why is this person in my life? What are they supposed to teach me? How am I supposed to train them in something literally new and different? Or what is our partnership going to do for both our lives, both our families, and possibly our children, or my children, or her children, or his children? It really doesn't know until we realize that we've either missed that opportunity or we've got to find some way to get it back. And the open truth is that we might choose a totally wrong partner because we're not asking God, we're not talking to Him about what it is we're supposed to be doing and how we're supposed to honor Him in our choice, in our life partner. Now this is sort of an unusual audio cast for me because I'm normally talking about the mayhem in life, but this is sort of a part of the mayhem. I literally was Googling my own name and found that there was a picture of some guy who sort of looked like me, but it wasn't me attached to my name. But thankfully, when I clicked the video, it went out to one of my videos. But I want to make sure nobody's out there pretending to be me. That's for sure. I've had enough identity theft. I've had enough theft of my property. I've had enough stealing of paperwork and personhood and all sorts of stuff in my life. I don't need anybody else out there, but I want to know that I have a life partner who's willing to fight for my rights as much as I'm willing to fight for her rights. And that's the truth. Now, in families, there's all sorts of ideas about siblings and how they should interact with another. But then in others, they have different ways of interacting. And that's something that a life partner has to be able to basically move and, and swing with. 
That was something I really loved about my first life partner, is that she literally understood the difficulties that were in my birth family and openly would just simply sit quietly and not produce much of a fight about it. When we talked about it in private, she said, you know, with some people, it's just better not to say anything at all because they will never change. No matter what I could say to them as a mature adult of virtually their same age because she was six years older than me, the reality is that in life, when we make alliances, when we make interactions, when we produce intimate talk about children, about handling situations of money, about practically anything related to our revenue, we have just produced an intimate relationship. Some women don't recognize that. Some women literally think, I'll just tell everybody all my business, I'll gossip about everybody else's business, and then at some point I'll get some help. But in the con uh, process of having a relationship with the opposite sex or someone of a interest to you, and I'll leave that open-ended because we have a lot of people in this world that the Lord has made, the reality is that we have to be thoughtful about the things we've said to someone. If we're actually talking about intimate relationships that we have with other people or our private ideas about different things in that realm, then we have produced an intimate relationship. And the reality is that relationship can pick up anytime at anywhere because literally there's one part that never dies. It's the love in those people for one another and what they once meant to each other. I have an old friend. She's actually older than me. She lives now with her children in another state, but she has always told me and has always kept in her mind that no matter when we don't see each other, the minute that we start talking, and it's like old times. And it literally was like that for me recently when I called her to tell her about some of my struggles, and she shared with me some of her struggles, and she's much older than I am. But when I was in my college years, she was one of the most loving people in my life. She helped me through tough times with my family. She could talk to my parents about the difficulties. And openly, she became sort of a mentor of mine. And I really appreciated that about her. And openly, I still care for her, even though we had sort of an odd ending of things in the last conversation. But openly, that doesn't mean I don't love an individual because of who they are, who they've become. What about you? How do you profess your care and love of those strategic alliances, those life partners, and those caring people in your life? You see, the magic of the Lord only comes through when we get with the right partner. And sometimes the magic is so powerful that the signs are so plentiful that it's overwhelming to us in life. I know in my case, in my particular situation, I literally get that sign for that individual almost every day. And let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret for those who have stuck with listening to me. I get those signs every day and I have for almost seven or eight years. I can't even remember exactly when I saw her, it's not true. I openly know that the last time I physically saw her was quite a while ago, and openly she has never left my heart. Not one day has passed without me thinking about her, without me looking for her, without me praying that this Christmas I'd see that loving face. But openly that's the truth. I'd also love to see my old spouse, I'd love to see my son whose picture is on my computer, but that's the way that a man is. He produces love, and that love doesn't die. A song came on the radio today that I hadn't heard in a long time by Richard Marks, and I didn't quite lose it like I once did, but that was a song between myself and my college sweetheart. And I sort of reminisced a little bit. And But the funny thing was that that transference happened, that I wasn't really thinking about the college sweetheart so much anymore. I started thinking about my last spouse and how I sort of longed to see her, and I started thinking about a friend that I was sort of missing, who was a spiritual friend that I could talk to about spirit and metaphysical things and Catholic things and other things. And then I literally started thinking about the woman that I loved. And I thought, you know, a half of this song really makes sense for that particular relationship. And I thought, what a wonderful music piece of music that he has produced. But I haven't heard him on the radio in a long time because we're on to new and different and other things. But openly, that's the way the world works, that the magic and the mayhem of the world comes through the people and the relationships of our lives. Now, if you sort of like this new style of talk, let me know. If you're interested in the mayhem talk, I can certainly tell you all the crap I've been through and how it relates to your life because it could happen to you at any second, any moment of the day. Because the people in power are still the people in power and they can still hit the people they want to hit. Because practically, apparently federal law and international human rights law is never on their minds because we live in a state that's sort of not getting it, but that's okay. Politicians will come and go, but eventually they will understand the three most important things to people, which literally is personhood, paperwork, 
and property. The minute we started focusing on that, we might get some of the roads around town repaired. I literally had an enjoyable bus ride from one part of town to the other. Never taken a bus ride that long, but I'm starting to explore our Indigo system. It's a wonderful little system. But openly driving through some of the parts of Glendale was just a nightmare on the rear end sitting in that bus because the roads are so bad. I had to ask the bus driver, how do you handle this every day? And she said, oh, no, this isn't the worst of the roads, I promise you. And we started talking about the other roads that she struggles to drive that bus to produce a life for other people with across the roads because for some reason politicians don't get that our cars are home away from home when we drive places and do things. Now my home away from home is an impound. I'm not likely to produce it out of it because someone ruined it already. And the truth is someone just stole the car keys. So I'm not really sure how the heck I'd even get into it at this point because I put car keys in my pocket in the place in which I was staying and I left them there when I went off to a court situation so I didn't set off all the buzzers and everything with metal and all that sort of stuff. And now those keys are completely gone. So for all I know, someone has stolen my car out of impound. But hey, if they wanted to pay the incredibly high rate for it, fine. But I should have never been charged. First and foremost, it was a business car that should have never been impounded. Second of all, because of the situation that I was in, it should have never been impounded because it was unrelated to my being uh, withdrawn from that particular vehicle at that moment in time. And third, openly, it's just wrong to take a homeless person and take away their vehicle and take away their right to have pizza. I had just bought a pizza. Do you know what? That pizza's still in that car. And as a joke, I just left it on the front windshield. There's no way I'm going to eat it, obviously. It's been there for weeks, but openly, that was what happened. I had just purchased a pizza, and then, boom, it all happened. The mayhem of life. More than I thought would ever happen before. But openly, that's the truth. But the magic of life is the love that we put in our hearts for the people that we passionately care for, that we long to see. And there's only one girl in my life I want to see right now. I'd love to see her walk through this room, and I will light up like a Christmas tree as I always did before. But openly, that's the way the Lord is, that once the wrong person who's helped to train our life for what we were needing to learn to prepare for the right person comes along, we are more than ready for that new place, that new opportunity. Some people, like one of my siblings, just decide she's not interested in anyone anymore. But I'm not so old and I'm not so gray that I don't want to have a loving partner in my life. What about you? Now, hopefully this has been a different sort of podcast. I'm talking about love. I'm talking about magic. I'm talking about mayhem. I'm talking about honoring the Lord in our choices. And I'm openly saying, hey, this is a different style. This is that freestyle reporting. This is that freestyle storytelling. And openly, maybe you like it even better. I don't know. But thanks for listening. This is Blake Genson of Blaze Communications, LLC. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to put me in a multitasking mode behind your work and just listen to a man talk about life love, liberty, and happiness, finding the people in our lives that make all the difference in the world. Thank you for listening.